So the solutions for uh, the first uh, strong induction, I, I assigned only a few and all a bit of the same nature, so just so that you can practice this. Um, so 6a was asking, uh, we have 3 cents and 10 cents, and um, which amount of postage can be formed using these? So the first, this is not strong induction, this is just testing out the 6a. It's 6c that is really uh, where the proof comes in. So let's start with testing things out. So what are the amounts we can make? I'm going to need to make a little table here. Uh, so this is the postage. Okay, so we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Yeah, wh why do I start from 3? Obviously I can never make 1 and 2, right? So 9, 10... Now I'm going to make a rather long list and, and I'll explain later a little bit more what I, why do I do this. And it's a bit, the question is, is a little bit hard in that sense because it's, I'll, I'll tell you. So, let's check it out. So, here is the, the, the way that you, this is the amount, so the, perhaps better to write that on top of here. Let me write here amount, amount, sorry, and here is the solution, if there is a solution. Now, three, that's okay. Four cents, there's no way you can do this, so no solution. Five, neither. Six, three plus three. 7 neither, 8 neither, 9, 3 plus 3 plus 3. And 10, of course, is just a 10. Notice that um, everything below 10, it's clear that I cannot do anything here because if I can only use the 3 cents, I'm going to have a multiple of 3. Okay? So up to 10, I can only do multiples of 3. But from then on, perhaps I'm a bit more flexible. 11, I still cannot do, but 12, of course, it's a multiple of 3. Any multiple of 3 I can do. So I could perhaps already put here this one, right? This is 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And the next one would be 18. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Okay. <clears throat> and so 19 up to 20 perhaps. And then I'll... Okay. And for the same reason, every multiple of 10 I can do. So I know already how to do 10. Okay. Now, for instance, 30 is a multiple of 10 as well as 3, so I can definitely do that one in, in, in even two ways. But that's not the question. How many ways? It's just can you do it or not? So where were we? In 13. Now, 13 I can actually do because now this is the first time I'm going to combine both, right? So 10 plus 3. 14, unfortunately, I cannot do. Be why not? Because I need a, it's not a multiple of 3, so I need at least a 10. If I need a 10 and 4 left, that's not a multiple of 3, and it's too small to, to have another 10. Okay. 16, what do you think? Yes, you can be done with because it's 10 plus 3 plus 3, right? 17, well, that's one, again, that I cannot do. Because, let's think about it. I need, how many cents, 10 cents I'm going to use? Well, it's not a multiple of 3, so I've used, I need at least 1. So, that re remains 7 cents, but I know I cannot do 7 cents. That's a problem, with only 3s. And I don't know. Tens cannot work here. So this is also not working. What about 19? 19 is 10 plus 9, so I know how to do that. It is 10 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Okay. So now 21 is a multiple of 3, so that could definitely can be done. 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. 22. Now that might be the first challenge. Let's think about it. Can I do this? With two tens I cannot do it, but I can do it with one ten. Because then it's ten plus twelve, and that twelve I can do this way. So you could you can keep going on a little bit. And if you try a little bit more, you will see that somehow it always works from this one onwards. Okay? So it seems to be here that the the the, 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 the dividing line is this 18 here. At this point, from this point onwards, I can do everything. So this is what we call uh, trying to find uh, a formula, trying to find a solution just by experimenting, uh, empirical. Now I'm saying I should, in order to convince myself, I should do a few more here down there. Otherwise I might be overlooking something, okay? But I know I can stop that this because I actually know the formula for it and 18 is the, the number that comes out of the formula. I'm not going to tell you the formula because it's kind of giving a little bit away that the way that the, the problem will work. So you can Google it, you can look it up. It's not a big deal, but um, okay. So 
So this, that's our, um, so my claim is now everything from here on, onwards. Of course, this is something, because we are talking here about infinitely many uh, possible numbers, I have to prove this. Just making the table is not going to prove this. Even if I make the table and I su succeed until, say, 50 or 60, without anything, skipping anything, being able to pay everything, that still is not a proof. That's, that is because there could always be some outlier, a high up. And you have to be very careful about that, especially in, in arithmetic, in, in problems of, of numbers. Very, very strange things can happen. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's it's 6A. 6A was not really what it was about. But this is what it was about. Uh, and, and so therefore, um, I will never ask this on a quiz. What I'll ask on a quiz is 6C here. Okay. Show. So P is the, P is the proposition that you can pay. I'm going to make it a little bit using these two guys. Yeah. Pn is N can be made using three and three. That's, that's the statement. Sorry. I mean, we all know what it is, right? So show that Pn holds for all and at least 18. That's the claim, the, the purple claim that I was making here down there. Okay. Now, um, the trick, if you have, you have done several of these, is that you, uh, if you have to do, so remember, there is two things, right? There is the initial step, and that would be n equals 18, you will say, but you have to be a little bit more flexible here, and we'll come back to that, but let's go to the induction step first. What's the induction step? Let's write that up. The induction step is, says that, assume... P works for all amounts less or equal to n. Okay, I, I don't introduce that k for all k, so for all amounts that are bigger than 18, of course, because I know that there are some amounts where it doesn't work. Okay, so assume P works for all amounts less or equal to. Um, N, but N has to be, for, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry, I, I, no, no, I, I'm not saying it's slightly wrong. It's for all am amounts, less or equal to N at least, N at least 18, so that's what I wanted to say. Okay? That's the, that's the induction hypothesis. This is what we call the induction hypothesis. To prove... P n plus 1, the next one. And what is the strategy? The strategy is you say, okay, I have to now make n plus 1. And what I do is I look at n plus 1 minus 3. Because if I know how to do that, I just add a 3 cent stamp and I'm done. Okay? So n plus 1 minus 3, which is n minus 2. So I, I'm, I'm only doing the proof, right? And then I see what I need. It's a little bit... It's... Normally what we do is the initial step, and then this. Now, the initial step, okay, let's, let's at least do the initial step. P18, yes, P18, that's just actually my table shows that P18 can be done. Okay, that was the initial step. But I'm, I'm, what my claim is I need to do a little bit more here. And, and I'll, this is something that we also will see to, in the, to today's lecture. <clears throat> so, okay, n minus 2. I need to do it for n minus 2. By induction hypothesis, I know this, right? Because I know it is true for all amounts less than n, n minus 2 is less than n, at least 18. So what I need is that n minus 2 is at least 18. So that is a little bit of a problem. That means that n should be bigger than 20. Then I'm safe. But in other words, I need to know what happens here um, at 19, right? Because if n is 19, I cannot use this, this trick, because I use, if n is 19 and I subtract uh, 2 from it, I get 17, which is something I cannot do. Now you say, therefore, I cannot do n 19. No, that's not what I'm saying, right? If n is 19, what happens in 19? Can I do it? Yes, here it is. So I can actually do 19. So if n is... 
Um, and then N20, what about 20? P20, yes, I can do P20 too, because again, here's, this, here's my solution. Okay. Now, now that I'm in the safe range, if I take any N, and I, sub and I have to prove it for N plus 1, okay? So I'm going to prove this, I am I'm assuming this here for a given N, and I have to prove it for the next one. Now, if N is 18, 19, or 20, I need to do, I need to know that it is true for those Ns, and that is exactly here. 18, 19, 20 are okay. Now, once I'm beyond 20, then I can use this trick, because I will add 1 to it, and subtract 3, that this number will be bigger than 18, and therefore I know that it can be done. This is my assumption here. Okay, so that is why we don't just need 18, but these two as well, right? But my point is that, let me, let me perhaps convince you better by this, by saying, okay, let's work this out here and assume that n is 19. So what does it say? Assume p works for all amounts less or equal to 19 and at least 18. In other words, I'm saying it works for 18 and 19. Um, yes, for 18 and 19. Now I would like to prove it for 20, right? That that's, would be the next one, 20. What I do, I subtract 3 from 20 and I get 17. Oh, but I cannot do 17, so I cannot use that. Now, because I cannot do 17, that means that my strategy doesn't work, but that means, doesn't mean that there might be a different strategy, and there is a different strategy for if n is 19, namely, just do it, okay? So, that is typical, you see, and this is, because we subtract 3, we need the first 3, uh, the first 3 um, initial steps, so to speak, the first 3 initial values. And from then onwards, I don't have to worry about this anymore, because now if I subtract 3, I will be within the range that I know that, so I, in other words, here I can then say Pn minus 2 holds because it is exactly within the range that I want it to be, and then by assumption, this is the assumption says, if you're, if you're trying to do something within the range between 18 and n, which is n minus 2, is that, then it holds. So n minus 2 holds, right? So, okay, so let me erase this part here now, because now let's conclude the proof. n minus 2 holds, so there is a solution So to solve p n plus 1, just add a, a 3 cent stamp to the solution of this guy. Okay? So that's the proof. <clears throat> yeah, as I said, the, the hardest thing by induction is sometimes not so much perhaps to do the proof, but to write it down properly and to see that you don't miss anything, okay? It might very easily, it's very easy to, to just blindly follow the technique and say, okay, I just do the initial step and then I prove this. But then you are forgetting a, a special low values for M where things could go wrong. Okay, so let's do the other one, <clears throat> number seven. So here we are trying to, um, what is it, uh, pay with two dollar bills, so dollar two bills and dollar five bills. Now you might say the two dollar bill doesn't exist, but actually it does exist. They are not in use much, but they do exist. So somehow you have a vending machine and, and sometimes vending machines are like that. And it only accepts two and five dollar bills for, let's say the one dollar bill receptor is broke down or something like that. Okay, and now is the question, what kind of amounts can I make? So, again, we're going to have to try um, do the make, make a little bit for small values. I'm going to tell you already the secret value. The secret value is actually the cutoff value, so the amount. Okay, let's, let's start from 0 and 1, obviously, can never be done. Never, because I need to be at least 2, 3, 4, 5... Two, I can be done, right? Don't you want me to write that? No. Three, I cannot be done. Four, yes. Two plus two, five, yes, of course. Six, 
2 plus 2 plus 2, 7, 2 plus 5, and it seems therefore, ah, I should, okay, let's do that one more, 8, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 9, 2 plus 2 plus 5, I hope that it's more and more getting more and more convincing that the cutoff point here in this case is um, 4. Again, this is something I know because I know the formula, but yeah. So what we have to show again is, um, so the, the, the proof that what we're going to do is P of N is, N can be made using these two amounts. Let me write it this way. Uh -huh. uh, four, and so the proof is for all and at least four. That's my claim. Okay, so proof by strong induction. The in base step or initial step. Yeah, so there are two words. Sometimes we say initial, sometimes they say basic step. Okay, the basic step is P4, uh, you would say, but we'll see we need one more. I will get, we'll think about that. And then the induction step. So the induction step is assume okay for all the values. Sorry, I have to write this with words. For all values, okay means okay. Let's be right, right perhaps better. Assume P n holds, but we, we sometimes just say P n. We assume Pn for all values between 4 and n to prove Pn plus 1. Okay, and the trick is again, the proof is now, so the proof of this, I've got to prove this now, right? n plus 1, I'm going to subtract 2 from there. That is n minus 1. Okay, now the only time that I would be in problem, let's think about it, if, if n is 4, I would be in problem because then I get 3, which I cannot do. Now, we know that 4 can be done, that's on the initial hypothesis. Now, if n is 5, so this is right, if, uh, yes, if n is 5, so I know it's true for 4 and 5, if I subtract 2 from 5, no, I'm sorry, I'm saying n is 4. Yeah, so, okay, um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, I'll be a bit before. So if n is 5, then I would subtract, I want to, I have to show, oh, sorry, I repeat again, sorry, n was 4. The problem in my proof is going to be when n is 4. If n is 4, let's see what I get then. Then, then this quantity here is 3, and I don't know it for 3, okay? So, in other words, if n is 4 here, you know, what am I trying to prove then? 5. I'm trying to prove the property for 5, but I cannot do it using the general technique. So, I have to do it separately. So, I have to also do P5. Now, they are easy, right? You just establish them. Okay? And in, in, a, in, in a quiz, I will not ask you to find the, the cutoff point. I'm just going to tell you that is the cutoff point and prove now that that's uh, where it works. Okay, from then onwards it works. There will be a quiz. Okay, so let's uh, go back now to the proof. So if n is 4 and 5, I, if n is 4, I have a written problem. So, but if n is at least 5, then there's no problem, because then this number here, this number here is then 4 or more, but it's not, it's less than n, so I know that I, I can, it, it's true, I know how to do it. So pn minus 1 holds. So, to now add dollar two bill to solution to this solution to get Pn. Okay, that's all how it works. So, and this is the, this pattern is always the same. And so, on, on the quiz, I'm going to ask you to do that. I'll do one. Um, extra problem in a review video and then you will have the quiz on this tomorrow. Okay.